Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I am going to be playing around with some Distress Reinkers and Dilution Sprays. I'm actually trying to duplicate a technique I had seen my friend Joan use on her card for the recent Essentials by Ellen Spring release hop. And I didn't have quite have the uh, gumption to do it the way that she did it. So I'm going to experiment with my own um, technique and see how well I can duplicate what she got. Because it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you like the end results, right? That's, I mean, that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> so I put some droplets of color from the reinkers there onto the acrylic block. And I also used a dropper tool to get the ink out of the dilution sprays. And then I'm also going to use one that I've cleaned out. So it's just fresh water that I'm adding there with the dropper tool to dilute those colors because they're pretty concentrated. And then I'll take a wet brush and just start uh, painting splotches of color onto this a quarter sheet of watercolor paper and it doesn't really matter that the um, colors blend and mix a little bit into each other I'm going to be careful so I don't end up with mud but I wasn't so concerned that I felt I needed to dry each color in between the next application of color I'm I was okay with the colors kind of mixing and blending just a little bit here and there so we'll see how how well the control freak in me can hold out on this <laughs> It's fun. You just kind of have to cut loose and just let it go. Go with the flow. So <laughs> I'm adding color here and there in different little puddles, and I'm also leaving some white space. And I may come back with more water to kind of dilute it down or come back and add more color to intensify it in different spots. But in any event, I just have these really fun splotches and puddles of color here and there with some white space in between. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my heat gun and I'm just using my tweezers to kind of keep the center of it down because I didn't tape this down. And I'm just going to dry those spots that are particularly wet. And the cool thing about that is it creates extra veins of color and variations there that kind of almost give it a marbled look. It's really fun. And I've achieved something similar with alcohol inks in the past, but I really love being able to do this with watercolor too. So when I was done and I just kept going, I just kept grabbing quarter sheet after quarter sheet of watercolor paper until I pretty much ran out of color <laughs> and just let it fade as I went. And I tried different combinations, but all of them I loved. I was like so tickled. And now I have this big stack of these panels ready to go anytime I need them. I just love how fresh this color palette is. Thank you, Joan. You just totally inspired me. So now what I'm going to do is layer two sheets of dryer these are dryer sheets and they're clean unused um, i just folded them in half and layered them um, on top of each other so i have a thickness of four layers of dryer sheets and then i'm going to go ahead and take my watercolor paper and put that on top of my cutting pad and then i'm going to lay these dies into place just picking where i want the colors to show up on these die cut pieces not that it's going to matter all that much because of the way the puddles were done but I'm, I'm a little bit of a strategist when it comes to this. And these are the Wild Garden dies from the spring release. And I just love them. And I haven't had a lot of time to play with them yet. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. And now that I've run this through my die cutting machine, I can actually um, remove the dies. And what's really cool about these dryer sheets is the die cut piece and the negative is going to stay down there onto the dryer sheet. And then I can go ahead and lift up the dryer sheet and this is awesome for intricate die shapes that are hard to get out of the die after you've cut them so you don't have to use a pokey tool and then it also holds the negatives in place on the dryer sheet so i can keep them intact and maybe use them for something else and in fact i have an idea in mind i just don't have time in this video to do it so you'll have to keep your eyes peeled for a video coming on what i did with the negatives so right now, um, I'm going through an Avery L uh, 6x6 pad that has some really cool neutral colors. You'll see that listed in the supplies over at the, the classroom blog. And I just picked a pattern that was pretty neutral, but still had enough texture and interest to it that it would enhance but not detract from my project. So I'm just going to fishtail this piece that I cut down to make a banner. And then I will trim that off to fit the dimensions of my card. Now my card is a Nina Solar White Heavyweight and it's four inches by five and a half. So it's just slightly narrower than an A2 card. And then I'm going to use a sentiment from the Mondo Magnolia set and ink that up with some archival jet black and stamp that directly onto my banner here. And this way the black ink will dry really fast. And then I decided I wanted more texture and interest on the base card itself. So I took some Kudatake Gonzai Tambi 
watercolor in black and I dipped a brush a wet brush into it and transferred the color onto a little acrylic block to get some fine spatter and then I switched gears and went and just went straight with the brush and added a little bit heavier spatters and type uh, took some typing paper to blot it dry so I could keep on working without stopping because I like to go right I like to plow right on ahead all the way to the end I hate to wait <laughs> So now I'm going to glue this down in place and finish building the card. I decided that this was the shape flower that would really work well on this layout. So I went back and pulled another piece of the watercolor paper and die cut these really fun, uh, almost daisy-like shapes that have open petals. And then I used some mini glue dots to glue them onto the card front. Now you could also use mono multi, but my glue dots were sitting right there, so I grabbed them. But in hindsight, I think I probably would have used the um, mono multi glue. And I went ahead and tacked those into place while I was you know, looking at the design. And then I decided I wanted a few more little flowers. So I went and grabbed another piece of watercolor paper so I could get these little tiny flowers in the colors I wanted. A little bit brought a little bit more of the green there into the scheme and now I'm gonna kind of figure out where I want to add my little sparkles and these are those sparkling clear sequins by pretty pink posh I just love these things I use gobs of these and I love the the sparkling clear ones so much because they go with like everything and then I had these black enamel dots I've been hoarding for for like ever and so I decided you know what I got to use them and that little extra black pop there is really going to help pull this card together. And now that I know where my sequins are going to go, I'm just going to grab those with my tweezers and swipe them through um, a little squirt of mono, or not mono, it's multi-medium. Um, the Ranger multi-medium works awesome for the sequins. You could also use glossy accents, um, but this works pretty good, so that's what I use. And I finished off by taking the quarter inch side of the We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper and just doing that one corner there at the top. And there you can see the finished flowers. I think they look so cheerful and I just love how quickly this came together. I love having those watercolored sheets all at the ready so I can just take my favorite dies and run them through my big shop very quickly and I have all these different elements I can use to make some really fast colorful beautiful cards all the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com and you can see still shots and more details there at the classroom blog and thanks so much for watching <laughs>